everyone, this is Mike Check 95 with another top 10 movies that I reviewed in 2022. I've done the bad, I've done the meh, or the films that didn't really hit the mark. And it's now time to talk about the films I like to call sleeper films. These are films that I kind of went into with very little to no, like, eh in them, kind of feeling like that. They didn't really uh, have really high expectations and whatnot, but then they really, really hit the mark as I left the theater or stopped watching it at home. So here are the top 10 sleeper films. Number 10 we will go to Into the Storm. This is a film that I've heard very little about until recently because my girlfriend absolutely loves this movie. She loves this film and the film called Geostorm. But Into the Storm was a very surprisingly actually pretty good film because I went into this film thinking that it was going to be another found footage film that was not great. It's actually more so of a foundumentary kind of style film where it's like a documentary but it's also all done kind of like by handheld camera and there's also third person actual like movie shots that they do and like the story is actually pretty good. The way that the characters reacted in the film when it came to the events of the movie were actually pretty natural for the most part. Some of the natural instinct are kind of, were kind of stupid but that's kind of like what humans do they make dumb decisions but the movie itself was actually really entertaining and I would actually give this film another chance to watch I actually would recommend it to a lot of people and that this film could make a top 10 for a lot of people if they give it a second chance number nine actually goes to a very surprising film of this list because the other six films before it uh, I don't think would really make anywhere on uh, this list at all, and that is Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon City. The main reason why I was going into this film with low expectations was because of how the Alice uh, anthology turned out in the end. It was just unbearable to watch, and it was just completely atro atrocious, a atrocity of all atrocities. Welcome to Raccoon City is ba is basically taking Resident Evil and just rebooting everything. It's nice to know that this film actually follows the games more and the events in the games a lot more than making something completely brand new. This one was just very surprising to watch. Mainly, it's, it's, I mean, mainly because, like I said before, it just it follows the game lore a lot better. Almost, I wouldn't say scene for scene and there's some weird things that they do for actor choices, but it's still actually pretty decent to sit down and watch through, and it's actually a breath of fresh air when it comes to the Resident Evil series altogether after watching the first six Alice films. Number eight goes to Terminator Salvation. Now, when this film first came out, I absolutely fucking hated it. But as the years went on, and I haven't watched it in so many years, I happened to catch a review that a fellow YouTuber, Cody Leach, did of Terminator Salvation, he had the same thoughts as well. He absolutely hated it when it first came out. But upon a second viewing after so many years later from watching it, this film actually has a lot more potential than what fans credited for. It's the only film in the Terminator series that is set during the post-apocalyptic war. It has probably one of the coolest Terminators in the entire series of Marcus. And if we don't talk about the, the filming incident with Christian Bale, this film had, like I said, it had a lot of potential. It could have built off of something very fantastic from what it had. It's just it didn't really perform with what fans really wanted for some reason, and we never really got anything out of it. Number seven goes to Jurassic World Dominion. Not per se really like a sleeper film. I mean, if you compare it to Fallen Kingdom, it kind of is because Fallen Kingdom was kind of a letdown watching it a second time. The first time I watched it, I thought Fallen Kingdom was actually really good. Second time watching Fallen Kingdom, it was a little rough to get through. Besides the Locust um, storyline that they inserted in, into the movie, Dominion was surprisingly pretty good. Now, it's not as good as the first two Jurassic Park films, and it's not as good as Jurassic World, per se. It's definitely a lot better than Jurassic Park 3 and Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. But again, going in with kind of low expectations, I mean, with the nostalgia feel of the other films that I really liked a lot, it, it boosted up a little bit. But basically, only basing it off of the sequel that it's following, it did raise some questions as to what they were going to do from there after some of the really strange um, uh, decisions they made for the script of Fallen Kingdom. Dominion, again, 
forget about the insertion of the Locust storyline. Dominion deserves a, Dominion deserves a second chance if you didn't really like it. It's not as bad as people make it out to be. It could be something a lot better on some elements when it came to writing it and everything, but don't just flat out say this film is bad. It's still actually pretty good. Number six goes to Predators. This is a film that like I have said to this day that is it's a very quiet film that nobody really ever talks about and after watching the Predator 2018 again and then going back to watch uh, Predators it really uh, actually is a really good breath of fresh air after watching a film like that. It's, again, it's a very quiet film that not many people talk about. It's a film that people didn't really give a really big chance. And just with the, the fact of the setting and how the story went on and, and how everyone got there was actually a different change of pace when it came to the first two films in The Predator 2018. And kind of great too. But give this film a chance. It does have its issues here and there. But I still think this film is strong enough to be a good film and to add it to your collection of movies. We're getting into the top five of the films that I believe were kind of sleeper films. Number five goes to The Equalizer. The reason why I say that this is a sleeper film for me is because when I initially went to go watch this film for the first time, I had no knowledge of what Equalizer was beforehand or what it was based off of. It is actually a really good movie. It is very fantastic. The actor choice was actually pretty great. A couple of niches here and there that were kind of off. But it's definitely a great, 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 great watch for a movie for the evening to grab some popcorn, grab some friends, and just watch this film unfold over time. I need to sit down sometime and watch the sequel of this film, and hopefully the, the third film comes out sometime soon so that we can actually get that. But this is kind of like your everyday Joe uh, reaching out to help out people, but kind of with the quote-unquote James Bond twist to it. It's kind of a weird way of putting it because my brain is a little weird sometimes. But this first film sets up a lot of good things. It sets up a lot of good potentials for sequels. Number four goes to The Experiment. This is based off an experiment that actually happened a couple, like, several years ago. I don't remember what the exact year was. But this is a film that Krieger Margin has re recommended for me to watch for several years until he finally pushed it upon us to watch it earlier this year back in January. This film opened my eyes to a lot of themes and a lot of issues that are ha happening even today. And this film came out a several years before all the problems that were happening right now. It really helps you really think about what people are doing to other people, how society treats uh, others, and it just makes you realize if, like, who's being the good guy, who's being the bad guy, and just the amount of power that people have can really go a long way if they use it right or they use it wrong. So it just really opened my eyes, and I really did enjoy the movie quite a bit. Number three, um, this one is on this list. It did get some kind of low expectations going into it because of a lot of the Warner Brothers drama that's been going on since the start of the DCEU. But number three goes to 2022's The Batman. A lot of it is just because that they've been pushing for an individual Batman film for a very long time and initially was slapped on as a Ben Affleck project as, as him as producer and director and then he was just going to act it with Matt Reed as directing and then they kicked him off the project and they hired Twilight Boy into it and it's just like there was so much political drama going on when it came to filming it with all that stuff going on plus the stuff that was going on while they had um, Robert Pattinson as, as filming as Batman but Coming out of it, it's actually a really, really good, down-to-earth, close-to-comic-book-based Batman. It was definitely a breath of fresh air after all the DC, uh, EU nonsense that's been happening the last couple years. And, like, it's very different from the Dark Knight trilogy as well. It's like its own special aura when it comes to a Batman film. It's, again, like, more down-to-earth, more gritty, more gothic-like. 
and definitely a lot more detective work and it actually does a really good job portraying Batman as like a year one Batman who is still trying to figure out who he is and what his image is going to be while protecting Gotham and setting a good example. Number two is a film that I had actually mentioned back in my bad top ten list, but not in a bad way. I brought it up in, in good at, uh, retrospect. But number two goes to 2022's Prey. I was very surprised that Disney okayed this to go on their streaming service because of how gory and rated R this film is. Again, like this kind of has the same effect as Predators when it comes to like going back and watching this film. Predator 2018 really, really, really put a dark mark, a stain on the Predator series, and this film brought it back to life. It pretty much brought everything back to the beginning and kind of gave a semi-origin story to the Predator series, and it just does so well on pretty much, like, it, it's, it's verbatim copy and paste of what the first film is, but, and it's... And it doesn't really have, I guess, the same aura as the first one. It's more horror-esque, but it's still really good. The story is fantastic. The acting was perfect. The, just, the direction that they went with this film was just fantastic, and I'm glad that they chose the directions that they went with this film. Number one, this film would have been the top ten good list of 2022, but there were ten films ahead of it that were, I, that were a lot better based off my scores, so I had to put it on the sleeper list. It's not really a sleeper film for me because this film I love so much to the end of time. I guess you can say it's kind of a sleeper film because a lot of people don't really like this movie, but I still think it's one of the fucking greatest sci-fi horror films of all time. And that is Alien Covenant. That is a hill that I'm going to die on. That Alien Covenant is by far one of the most fantastic Alien films ever made. It, had, it has a lot of similar auras as Prometheus and the first Alien film kind of put together. It ties in very well with the first one, even though there's a lot of unanswered questions when it comes to that. They really do what they can to impress the fans, and the fans wanted more of the Xenomorphs, and they turned around and said they wanted more of the Engineers. I like what they did with this film. I will forever, like I said, I will forever die on the hill that I am on saying this film is one of the best Alien films ever made. Like, probably always going to be number two if not number one in my Alien like ranking list. That is my top ten sleeper list of 2022. Hopefully you have enjoyed my top tens as of late with the bad, the meh, and the sleeper films. The next top ten and the final top ten for the top ten 22 films that I reviewed will be the good. And these are films that I thought were fucking fantastic. But until then, this is Mike Check 95 signing out.